business owners that want to start up and they're having a hard time finding someone just to help them. If you go to sba.gov, look for what is called SCORE, S-C-O-R-E, mentors. They're all over the country and they're volunteers with the SBA. And they are retired men and women that love small businesses and love to help coach individuals. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another Knowledge Bomb episode of Lead to Greatness, where we believe in helping others reach their greatest potential and together change the world. Today on Lead to Greatness, we have Deb Curtis. If this is your first time joining us, please consider subscribing and hit that notification bell and hit that like button. This will be greatly appreciated in helping getting out this content to great leaders and great individuals like yourself. Deb is the founder of Curtis Small Business Finance Solutions. She is an SBA specializing in business ownership transitions. Her expertise includes, but is not limited to, financial analysis and reporting, team building, business management and consulting, and strategy planning. Deb have over 30 years experience in the financial and banking industry. Please help me welcome Deb with overcoming SBA loan challenges. This is Cedric Francis and you're listening to the Lead to Greatness. Let's say happy birthday to Deb today. Today is her birthday. And I have the balloon here in the back, the birthday balloon in the back representing. So yeah, definitely, definitely. Amazing. Definitely, definitely, we're definitely excited. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, we booked this show, I don't know, gosh, maybe. It was in April. Good Lord, it was yes. April, yeah. And all I said was, yeah, let's book that day. It's my birthday. That's it, nothing glamorous. <laughs> And here we are, I don't know, six, eight weeks later, and he shows up with a birthday song when, right before showtime and a birthday <laughs> balloon in the background. Dang. Yes, Driven yes. industry in business banking and business lending. Yeah. Many companies talk a talk about fair and equal treatment of all their employees. Many companies talk, especially in uh, fair and credit equal, equal credit opportunities for all the people, they all talk a talk. But I was an employee that was a, a, a white woman mm -hmm. that worked in these big companies that saw the talk wasn't walked internally. Mm. And if it's not walked internally, Cedric, how in the world do they think their front line of people, might I add, a white male dominated industry, yeah. how do they think they're going to treat borrowers or clients that come to them? They already know on the inside it's a disparate treatment, but yeah. here's here's the trick behind it all is it is there's the corporate culture of silence. A lot of the women that I work for at various employers and even the men even the white men knew that there was disparate treatment but they don't say anything because they have fear of retaliation so the challenge is we never get out of this because nobody wants to say anything and speak up for fear of losing their job or having that hr target on their back because it's impacting even small business ownership today. And, and that leads me to why I'm doing what I'm doing today. I exited corporate America because of the disparate treatment, not only internally, but seeing it externally, not with everybody, but certain lenders cherry picking who only they want to work with, who they want to help because there's a better chance that they'll get approval. Um, I've seen women not have return phone calls from business brokers or certain bank lenders because they just think the man will have a better shot. Through all my hurt over 30 years in corporate America and personal life, I just decided to pray more about it. Like, where do you want me to go, God? Because it isn't working where, where I'm in. And, and I realized where my passions led me were my my past hurts so now i take those past hurts 
to be a voice of reason and rise up other women and people of color toward small business ownership of established money-making businesses across this country. Not startup, Cedric, because mm. those are difficult. Startup businesses are hard for anybody to get financing. Mm. I'm here to celebrate unity and diversity and create small business ownership for women and people of color just as much as our white counterparts men are. And I hope every SBA lender and every business broker out there that is a white man, whether you have a bias or not, that you all pull together and agree with me on this and start raising the bar. Because I know you know who you are because I know you know what you're doing because I've seen it. I've seen it. Because there's someone dealing with small business uh, right now. They're trying to figure out. They probably just started their business maybe a year ago, probably fresh at it. <laughs> What, what are some steps or what are some advice that you can give to small business owners or someone that's just getting started to maybe you're not ready right now for the uh, SBA loans or whatever, but how can they set themselves up for that type of success early on? What should they be thinking about? Yes. And thank you for that question, because that that's a, that is common. There's a lot of a lot of individuals out there that would like to start up a business or maybe they have start they started up a business a year ago but they need more money and yeah. they've probably pulled all the equity in their home they yeah. bootstrapped it they cashed in their retirement savings because they had a dream that they believed in and our government has to do a better job at monitoring you know the tracking of what banks are what the front end lenders are saying no to, whether it's the dollar size or the applicant themselves, mm -hmm. who they are, what color they are, what sex they are. And sadly, the uh, the management and the the owners of the of the companies, they're more concerned about hitting goal. So whatever it takes for that front line to get there, mm -hmm. typically they're they're not monitoring as much because they're looking at the balance sheet and mm -hmm. they're looking at the stockholders shares and the growth. They're not looking at the overall, are we being what we say we are fair and equal? Mm -hmm. So to those business owners that want to start up and um, they're having a hard time finding someone just to help them, if you go to sba.gov, G-O-V, sba.gov, um, look for what is called SCORE, S-C-O-R-E, mentors, SCORE mentors. They're all over the country and they're volunteers with the SBA. And they are retired men and women that love small businesses and love to help coach individuals uh, on how to start up, put together a business plan, projections, and then usually these SCORE mentors in the area where you're located, they know where to send you to find those smaller loans, the smaller wow. capital. Yeah, retire grandmas and grandpas, basically. I'll, I'll probably be a SCORE mentor when I'm 80 years old, <laughs> you know? Uh, but they just have a heart to help people that want to start a small business and, and, and how do we, where do we even go or what do we do? And they do that at no charge. It's complimentary. It's just, it's, it, it's their volunteer work. So that's where I would suggest to start for the brand new startup. And then for the, the, um, small businesses that are doing well, but they just need some more cash to get over the hump. Yeah. You know, maybe, maybe they need 50 grand, 25 grand, hundred grand, whatever that may be just to grow. They need some working capital. I always will suggest, you know, Google up online, small business grants in the County where the business is located or small business grants in the state where your business is located or small business grants in the township, try them all. And Google will pop up information. You just gotta look at all the different feeds and they'll start giving you some names and numbers 
of who to call in regards to small business grants. What are small business grants? It depends upon the city or the state or the township where the business is located. There's some kind of an economic need that they want to stimulate business growth. So my son-in-law um, and my daughter, they own a, a business up north um, where I live in rural Wisconsin, and they wanted to open up a second location and they needed about 50 grand to purchase a, a printing machine because they, they print signs for home decor and such, and they sell it online and, and in stores up north in Wisconsin. Mm. And um, every bank they called said, no, we don't do loans that small. No, we can't help you. No, no, no. I always get the no's. A lot of it is just, you're just talking to the wrong people. So I told them exactly what I just said to you, Cedric, for your listeners, Google up small business grants. Sure enough, he did. And he called me the next day, got a name and number of a lady and found out opening up a second location downtown in the little township that they wanted to open. Mm -hmm. They have economic grants <laughs> to give to small business owners and they gave him a hundred grand. It's, it's a loan, but there's no payback and some of them can be forgiven in his case his contract was if he can provide that they stayed renting downtown as an open business and that they generated employment of like two or three employees over a three-year period wow. so so the money was given it's in like a grace period of just being you know a grant there's no payback and in three years if he can provide proof that he stayed open and they succeeded and the money helped them generate employment that money's forgiven amazing so amazing. they don't teach this anywhere and um there's no rhyme or reason ladies and gentlemen as to what those grants are and there's no rhyme or reason when they're announced a lot of times if you contact your local small business chamber of commerce hit or miss who you're talking to because it just could be a you know part-time telephone girl that's answering it really doesn't know anything but you got to just keep nosing around that's what my daddy taught me nose around and just keep pushing and asking questions and google will give you a lot of name and numbers if you can find the money it's out there but nobody will teach you that you have to just keep sourcing and, and asking questions and listening to podcasts like this show to find out, God, I never even thought of that. Right. And, and just like my son-in-law, boom, hundred grand. And they're doing well. Now they got wow. the second location up and wow. they've, they've hired, they've hired more than three employees. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Deb, this is, this is awesome. You just gave us some nuggets. So maybe starting your own business, maybe walking through, a little bit of your process, giving away some sauce, of, yeah. uh, some secret sauce of your process. What did you do? How did you do it? Mm -hmm. And also, if you did something when you started and you like, man, I wish I would have did something different, throw that extra ingredients uh, in the process for us as well. I sure will. What I know now, if I would have known five, 10, 15 years ago that you could acquire and establish money-making small business with the SBA, similar to like being a first-time home buyer, being a first-time business owner. The process is real similar. You, you got to have good credit. Let's face it, you're taking out a loan, just Absolutely. like if you buy a house, you got to have some down payment, but it's, it's manageable. And, and just like buying a house, you got to have down payment, right? You got to have good credit. You, ha you have to have down payment. You got to have some like of people because you're going to manage a team. Now, do you need to have experience to manage 50 people or 500 people? It just depends on the business you're acquiring because many businesses have 10 employees and they're still generating a million dollars in revenue and, and they're profitable. And the profits of that business, Cedric, the cash 
after the current business owner is pulling a salary, which by the way, will be transferred to you, the new owner, when you transfer in. Mm -hmm. So acquiring a business gives you immediate officer salary. When you start up one, you don't earn anything until two to three years later, if you're profitable, (laughs) right? So acquiring one, there's a salary there. And after the salary is paid and all the other bills are paid, there's still enough cash flow on that bottom line. And that's the money, the cash profits of the business. If you transfer in and operate it and and are a good manager of people and let them just keep doing what they've been doing all along for five, 10 years and let the ship sail and you just take care of your employees, that profit makes your SBA loan payment. That's Mm -hmm. how the bank approves the loan. It's based on the business that's selling, the income that it's earning. When you're hungry at night and, and you need to make a quick meal, you go walk into the grocery store and you're in the produce department and there's a section where all the meal kits are ready. You got a beef stew, saran wrap, just throw it in a crock pot. Yeah. Well, that's how buying and established money making businesses. Everything is set. You got your established employees, your loyal customers, they're all there. So that's one way to consider a plan B to what your audience is doing today wow. and how to how to set yourself up for that plan B is similar to how do you set yourself up to buy a house? You save for down payment, you make sure you have good credit, and then you talk to someone like me to help you get there. Sometimes you're ready today and you just don't even know it. Um, Then the other option would be for all of you that want to be a startup. So start your plan B your side hustle, if it really is a side business. And like for me with my business, it was established in 2018. I already knew back then the disparate treatment was internally and externally, and it was driving me bonkers because I'm such an ethical, honest, transparent person. And it never worked for me because Um, I had a target on my back. They would rather keep their top performers that do it all wrong and cherry pick uh, and let me go that wants to help everybody, (laughs) you know? So I already knew I was going to be probably doing this on my own uh, in 2018. So I set up the LLC, the plan B, just like your listeners will, if they want to have an out and just start planning it out and working what that business is going to look like. That's what I did. Mm. And usually if you're in an industry and you're working today in corporate for something that you really do desire and like your, your sidekick is going to be similar to that. Or maybe you're doing something you don't like in corporate and there's something else you're passionate about. Um, I'm a big believer, Cedric, that, our hurts of the past create our solutions for others today and Mm. that's called that's called a business knowledge (laughs) this is this is great what are some practical leadership growth tips tools advice that you can share with the lead to greatness community to help us reach our greatest potential yeah okay based on my experience, some advice where you feel dismissed. Um, Maybe you're a woman and um, you're pregnant and you feel like you're being treated differently because now the boss knows you got a baby on the way. So you're going to be sick and the baby's going to be sick. This stuff is real. Yes. Uh, Don't quit would be my message. And I I'm saying that to you because my most recent um, employer that I had worked for, I um, had a friend of mine who was an attorney that represented uh, women uh, in the workforce that were treated differently, mm-hmm. um, trying to educate them on what not to do. And we all just want to quit and and leave, but that's what corporate wants you to do. So 
try to hang in there and seek out, if you can, counsel. Um, LinkedIn is full of work workplace uh, discrimination lawyers that are willing to guide you through that. And just don't quit because once you quit, you no longer have a case. That's the message they sent to, to me. Once you quit, you're done. You have no case. But if that treatment is happening and you didn't quit, you just you have to track everything, monitor everything, write everything down, retain emails and don't quit and seek help. OK. Number two, always have that plan B would be my advice to your listeners. Like we talked as as a leader, especially if some of your listeners are in, in their middle age, you know, 30s, 40s, you know, 50s. I'm 56 today, by the way, just as a reminder to everybody, um, have that plan B going. You'd be surprised even on social media. I started personally branding just Deb Curtis on LinkedIn because I, I realized over time, no matter where I worked, the name of the bank, the brick and mortar buildings, their beautiful commercial buildings, and the banks all talk about how great they are and what the banks do. None of that mattered to the people that I worked with that came to work with Deb Curtis. And no matter where Deb Curtis went, they followed. It wasn't the bright, shiny lights on the building and the beautiful interior design of the banks and how fresh and they all went golfing. And it was just, mm. you know what I mean? The corporate feel no. that didn't matter to the people, the small businesses that needed me, they wanted Deb Curtis. So that personal branding is where people follow me. So think about that, ladies and gentlemen, if you're in corporate today, it's okay to personal brand who you are on Instagram, LinkedIn. That's where people are today. And that's where business is, is being done. That's where we're finding podcasts. That's where we're finding who to work with for coaches, for small businesses. That's where it's at. Um, that would be my message as far as leadership. You have to lead yourself and create your next opportunity, whether it's startup, whether it's plan B, getting ready for a startup and getting ready to acquire a business or ready to buy a business today. Mm. That would be my call to action. You got to take the action because they're not going to give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Knowledge bomb. Yeah. Yeah. If someone was to work with you, uh, what can they expect? Oh my goodness. I'm a woman solopreneur. Yeah. And what the, what, what the process looks like is I help individuals become pre-qualified with the SBA as a business buyer. There's mm -hmm. a lot of things that I look at as far as um, your resume, you know, your interest, your goals, what, what kind of assets and cash do you have? Um, I look at all of that and I don't want to get into it now, but I qualify you as a business buyer, just like a first time home buyer, right? You got qualified at a bank. They look at your personal stuff to qualify you to purchase finance a house. Mm. Well, I'm looking at your stuff to qualify you to purchase finance a business, mm. but but it's a little bit different because now the, the business, once you're pre-qualified as the buyer, now we have to shop just like shopping for the home to find the right business that has that bottom line cash flow to make your mm -hmm. SBA loan payment. Mm -hmm. And you need me in that arena because that is where the male dominated industry is a force to be reckoned with. Um, business brokers, SBA lenders, there's a lot to navigate in there as an individual trying to do it yourself. So I, with my 20 years of experience in this field, might I add, I am a mama bear just because of what I saw internally and externally. So I know the tricks of the trade. Right, right, right. I'm on your side <clears throat> to get through that pack and make that transaction happen. Um, so there are no return phone calls and no responses from certain people because they just don't want to deal with you. Um, so I'm, I'm there to help guide you to get you there. 
Awesome. So you're on LinkedIn. How can others reach out to you? Yeah. Um, my website is debcurtis.com. That's as simple as it gets. Mm -hmm. And my email is deb at debcurtis.com. And uh, my favorite social media of choice is LinkedIn. If you're out there, you can connect with me. I'd love to know that you saw me on Cedric's show. I always like to know how did you find me. But the website has all my social handles. It's all the same. And, um, you know, everyone always asks what's your call to action or do you have anything that, that's a giveaway? And, you know, it, my call to action is unity and diversity. Spread kindness and join me on changing the narrative because one voice can't do it alone. So let's just join hands and stand up. And if you know someone where I can be a voice on another podcast show, get me on it because I'll, I'll tell my stories and I'll be that voice of reason because those hurts of my past are all of your listeners' solutions for today. And I really believe in that. That's my calling from God. On behalf of the Lead to Greatness community, we want to thank you so very much for taking time on your birthday to add value. To oh, you. best birthday gift ever to <laughs> be a voice of reason. I will sleep tonight knowing that we had this opportunity and I'll say a prayer and God will tell me, job well done, young lady. And that's what I want to keep hearing every day. So we want to thank you for joining us today on the Lead to Greatness podcast. And if this is your first time, don't forget to subscribe. Hit that like button, hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of these amazing episodes. And if you're on iTunes, go ahead and rate the podcast and leave a review. That helps get the word out to great leaders and entrepreneurs like yourself. So we want to thank you for joining us today. So remember, if you help others reach their greatest potential, together we can change the world. Peace.